Thank you guys so much for joining today. I'm sure a lot of you have joined some of our past webinars. Today, we're going to be doing something different, which is really exciting for me and for you guys, because you don't, you're not stuck with hearing me talk. You get to hear from someone a lot more knowledgeable than I um, in Matt. Matt, you'll hear more about him, but he runs an awesome website and community called Swim University, which covers everything related to pool and hot tub care. Um, he has been nice enough to, you know, host one of these and give us all tips into how we can, you know, cut saving, cut some of our costs um, when it comes to pool care, how to maintain pools. I know a lot of you guys like myself, you know, sometimes having being a simply host and need your pool needs more care than the average pool owner. So how to, you know, work around that. Um, so I'm really excited to dive in. Moving to the next slide. So just some housekeeping before Matt kicks us off. Uh, again, as usual, this is a recorded session. So kindly mute your line so we avoid any unnecessary feedback. Please leverage the chat feature. If you have any questions while Matt is going through his presentation, please just shoot it in the chat. Um, myself and Ariana will be in there answering whatever we can. And if not, we will save it for the end. We'll bring it up um, to Matt once he's done with his presentation. Also, as always, great time to check to try out the chat feature. Um, where are you tuning in from? How long have you been a Swimply host? Um, do you currently use a pool guy versus do you do your own stuff? I feel like that could be interesting. Um, Matt's going to give us some more tips on how to hopefully get rid of our pool guy. Um, and then, as always, we will have a Q&A session at the end, which is what I am really excited for. Anyway, Matt, please take us away. All right. Uh, thank you very much for joining. This is new to me, so bear with. But I've been doing Swim University. I've been in the uh, pool industry since I was a 13-year-old child. I am 40 wow. this year. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you were familiar. Years. How many years is that? 27? Is that 20? That can't be right. Oh, boy. That makes me feel old. But yeah, 27 years. You're right. So yeah, uh, I've been doing this for a very long time. Um, I have started Swim University back in 2006. And I've went full time on it in 2011. And now Swim University is me, my wife, and my brother. That's it. Um, all of our what we mainly do is content. We we have a, a really popular YouTube channel. We have our website, swimuniversity.com. We have, uh, I don't know if there's more stuff in here, but we have, uh, you know, TikToks, your Instagrams, your Facebooks, all those things. And of course we, you know, we are an education first company. So that's why we're here today. We're here to educate about pool care. So here's the agenda. We have uh, pool guy versus no pool guy. I know that we wanted to talk about what it's like to DIY the pool. Um, that is where we specialize. We are not trying to put anybody out of business. We're not trying to put pool people out of business. Um, but we recognize that some people don't like working with um, contractors and they want to do it themselves because it is easy. It can be very easy. Although this industry does like to overcomplicate things. And one of the things that we like to say is we have pool cared simplified. All right. We're going to talk about opening your pool for the season because guess what? It's April and you know, we're, we're coming up on it, if not already there. In fact, I'm in Colorado today and it is 72 degrees out. So it is, it's nice. I'm about to head to Portland tomorrow where it's 50 and raining. So, oh, well, but Hey, we're going to open up our pools hopefully sooner than later. In fact, I remember if I remember correctly, the groundhog said early spring, right? That's not, that's not, I know it happened, but maybe even earlier. So then we're going to dive into the two most important troubleshooting topics that I hear constantly. My pool is cloudy and my pool is green. And then we're going to go into my simplified version of pool care, which I refer to as the three C's of pool care, which is circulation, cleaning, and chemicals. And finally, we'll cover uh, covers. We'll cover covers and heating as well. All right. Then finally, after all that, we'll get through it quick, I promise. Q&A, because I know that's probably why you're here. All right. Well, there you go. Everything I said is right there. Uh, yeah, this is this is all true. 10 million homeowners and growing. Yeah. Started as a one-man side project in my parents' basement. Mm -hmm. 
and now it is a small family business and we are located in Colorado. That is correct. So there you go. All right. So let's talk about pool guy or pool person versus no pool person. Um, how to reduce the dependency on a pool person, a pool contractor, somebody coming out to your house to clean. Now, again, not trying to put anybody out of a job. Some people like myself, like I have a lawn care service. I you know, I get it. But every once in a while, I'm like, I could probably do this myself. I should do this myself. So I'm going to start doing it myself. But I wished, I wish, and I know this exists, but it doesn't, it's, it scares me a little bit. The idea of a robotic lawnmower. The last time I saw one was in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And I'm pretty sure it almost killed the entire family. So I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that. However, when it comes to your pool, a robotic pool cleaner is probably the best investment you will ever make. It's essentially like a robotic lawnmower. It just automatically vacuums the pool. You can leave it in even while you're swimming, although I don't recommend it. But you can leave it in while, you're, while the pool is not being used. And it will basically – well, won't basically. It will actually clean the bottom of your pools. And a lot of them, depending on what kind of pool you have, will actually go up the wall – It'll scrub the the top of the, the water line. And a lot of them have built-in filter bags where they can filter down to two micron, which basically means it can act as a secondary filter to your pool. This is something that if you are a Swimply customer and you or you're a Swimply host, I believe that this is a must-have if you don't already have it. Now, I know they make... Uh, in, you know, in pool vacuums, there are pressure side vacuums and there are suction side vacuums, but they rely on your filter, whereas a robotic cleaner does not, right? They also make, speaking of robots, surface skimmers. Now, these are, most of them that I've seen so far are actually solar powered. So they don't even require to be plugged in. They don't require an outlet. They can, they literally just float on top of the pool and they're flat. They're pretty large. I'm not going to lie. They're about as, as the surface area of a robotic pool cleaner. So it's, it's fairly large, but it skims. So if you live in an area where there's a lot of leaves, a lot of debris that's falling in your pool all the time, you can add this in and it kind of just slowly kind of like, a what are those like casino boats, you know, like those, those big, uh, I can't even think of the name of them, but you're, it drives and then it just kind of skims the top and then you just empty it out once in a while. Those things are great. Not the most affordable thing in the world because they are fairly new, but they're out there. And if you want to automate your pool, that's certainly a way to do it. And then, of course, there's just like auto cleaning in general. They have, like I mentioned, the in-pool cleaners, your robotic pool cleaner, your skimmer, whatever you want to, you know, even your skimmer attached to your pool is a technically an automatic cleaner. All right. Then we have automatic sanitation. So automatic sanitation, this is. You know, so one of the reasons, in fact, I know pool people who come out to houses and they just drop in robotic cleaners and then leave for like an hour and then come back and pick it up. So you could just do that and not have to pay that person every week or every two weeks. Um, they also make, and I'm sure some of you already have these things, automatic sanitation systems. Like you can get a mineral sanitizer system. You can get a chlorinator. You can get a salt water generator or a salt water chlorine generator because um, which I'm sure this question may come up. Saltwater pools are chlorine pools, and it's something I have to tell a lot of people all the time. And then, um, then other ways to reduce dependency is obviously they come over, they dump in liquid chlorine usually, do a quick vacuum, and they're out. You can add a robotic cleaner. You can dump in chlorine or have an automatic feeder that does it for you. And the rest of it's kind of easy. So as long as you have these chemicals on hand in a shed or in your garage, they're pretty easy to use. And all you have to do is follow a basic schedule with some test strips or a liquid test kit. And so we recommend keeping specific chemicals on hand like alkalinity increaser, which is a big one, also known as baking soda. So if you want to go to Costco and get yourself a big bag of baking soda, you can do that. Um, they also make pH increaser and pH decreaser, also known as soda ash or borax, or you could use muriatic acid if you want to 
get uh, if you want to use a liquid acid as opposed to a dry acid. But those two, I recommend just getting a pH increaser and a pH decreaser, keeping them on hand. You won't use them as frequently as you would an alkalinity increaser. And then other than that, if you're running a chlorine pool, obviously you need chlorine, whichever you prefer, whether it's granules or tablets, or if you have a saltwater pool, good for you. You don't even have to buy those things. Um, I also recommend keeping shock on hand, non-chlorine and chlorine shock, depending on if you have a cloudy pool after someone uses it or a green pool after someone uses it or a ton of weather, you never know. And then the last thing, the last two things I'll say is you can keep these on hand, but you don't actually need to, which is cyanuric acid or pool stabilizer, or a, these are all the same chemical, um, and calcium hardness increaser. These are chemicals you usually add once at the beginning of the year, or even depending on if, where your water sits already. And then you really never have to add it again for the rest of the year. So don't have to keep it on hand, but something that you could do at the beginning of the year in our opening chat and then move on from there. And honestly, everything else is extra and unnecessary. Any other chemical that someone tries to sell you, any other chemical that you know you think you might need, I promise you, you don't. But as long as you can keep these readings at their levels at all times, then you're good to go. And this is something that the pool professional can't do because they're not at your house 24 seven. They're not monitoring your water levels, your, 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 you know, your chemical levels. And so that's why it's, you know what, get a bottle of test strips. They're super cheap. They don't have to be super accurate. They're very easy to use. Dip a strip, take the reading. Are you good? Are you not good? If you're not good, you know, dose it with a little alkalinity increaser, add a little bit of chlorine. You're kind of good to go, honestly. And I'm sure there's going to be a ton of questions and we'll get to them. So with us, we like to focus on these readings. Now, I'll I'll say that they can be wider than this, but this is where we like to keep people. pH is at 7.4 to 7.6, alkalinity between 100 and 150 parts per million, and free chlorine between one and three parts per million, depending on what type of system you have. But we'll get more into that. All right, so let's talk about quickly. Is there, and and I don't know if we should stop and have any questions now, or should I just keep rolling? Let's keep going, and then at the end we'll we'll do all the questions. We're also taking note of the ones in the chat too. Sounds good. All right, so opening your pool. Hey, look, if you live in an area where it's warm and it's 70 degrees right now and it's going to remain 70 degrees for a while, even until this the summer, I the, the earlier you open your pool, the better. Because what is happening right now in our in our neck of the woods, it is 70 degrees. Now, the water is still very, very cold. But as that water starts to warm up and the cover sits on top, it is now a dark, warm place where algae will thrive. So the earlier you can open it, the less you're going to deal with a dirty, you know, black green pool. That is if you closed it correctly. So that is the one caveat. So we like to say that as long as the temperature stays above 70 degrees, the outside temperature, not the water temperature, uh, above 70 degrees for a long period of time, even just open it, right? Typically this ends up being around May 1st to May 15th in the States, depending on where you live. Obviously, like Pacific Northwest, the North, the North, 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 uh, it may be a little bit later, but, you know, and then obviously there are some places where I'm sure some of you live where you're open year round, you don't have to worry about this. So how do you open? Here's the thing. A lot of people will hire somebody to open. And I think that that is not necessary and i'll say it diplomatically i do believe in having a professional closure pool because if you don't correctly blow out the lines then you could be asking for a lot of problems a lot of damage and i wouldn't want the, that liability on myself as a, as a homeowner but with opening there is no blowing out the lines it's just letting the lines fill back in with water so really all you have to do is remove the cover, remove any drain plugs that are, that were um, not drain plugs, but uh, remove like the, the plug, the, the winterization plugs, there are these rubber plugs that, or, or even the um, Reddit plugs that go into your return jets 
and your skimmer. Your skimmer could have something called a gizmo, which is like this green thing. It could have, depending on who closed your pool, it could have empty soda bottles. All of those things just get removed. Put your skimmer baskets back in. Make sure that all of your valves at your filter system are open and allowing that and make sure the water level is filled so that all that water can start to rush into the skimmer, can rush through the pipes. And you want to prime the pump at this point because the first, before you start adding chemicals, you want to make sure that your filter system is actively running because you don't want to add chemicals while the water is still. And all you have to do is make sure that the skimmer valves are open and water is flowing into the pump and filter. You will probably have to replace the drain plugs that have been removed during the winterization process on your heater, on your filter system, on your pump. If you have a booster pump, if you have any other features, any other chlorinators, they usually have drain plugs that are removed. And if you didn't close it yourself, then those drain plugs, and you had a professional close it, those drain plugs are in your uh, pump housing where your where your pump basket is. That's where they're all located, hopefully, because that's a pretty industry standard thing to do. Um, so then once you have it all filled, you could just kick on the motor and everything should start pumping. It might take a second, but if it doesn't, then if you if you know if you have air in the system, then this is where you need to prime the pump. And this is very simple. All you do is take a garden hose and you can place it in one of two areas. You can first try to take your garden hose running and stick it in the closest skimmer to your filter system. And that's just adding extra water into the into your plumbing to try to get it to the pump so that it actually starts to create the suction. The second place that that doesn't work is you can shut the system off. Usually shutting the system off and turning it back on may work too, but you can shut the system off, open your pump lid and just start filling from there. Just fill, fill, fill. It will never, it will never overflow because all the water is going to go one place or another. And once you keep getting it filled, then shut the lid, kick the pump back on, and you should be good to go. It may take a few tries, but that's the biggest problem people run into when opening. And then after that, it's really just adding the chemicals. So first thing I would do, test the water. You can use test strips. You can use a liquid test kit, which is more accurate, but requires some more work. And you could use, if you want to spend the extra money or you're colorblind, which one out of every 10 men are, you or and one out of every 200 women are, uh, you can use a digital test strip, a digital, there's digital versions out there of the, they either measure test strips. So they'll just give you the accurate reading, or you can get a digital pH meter, which can be expensive, can be expensive. If you have a saltwater pool, you can get a digital salinity meter, which they use for, um, I mean, they make them for pool net pools now, but they use them for saltwater fish tanks. And yeah, so just get a baseline of where your water currently is. And then after that, you just want to make sure that you do a few things in this order. So the first thing you're going to do is if your alkalinity is low or if it's high, you want to adjust that. Alkalinity is always first. Then you want to adjust your pH. But if your pH, if you adjust your alkalinity correctly, sometimes your pH will just fall in line. And once those two things are balanced, then you can start to add chlorine. You can add um, cyanuric acid. If you if it's the beginning of the season and you have a zero reading, you can add cyanuric acid, which for those who don't know, cyanuric acid is a chemical. This is especially important in um, saltwater pools and pools where they've been using liquid chlorine and pools that are in direct sunlight all day. Cyanuric acid basically is a protectant from UV because as UV rays from the sun, they at, end up burning one part per million of chlorine every single hour. So imagine you have no cyanuric acid in your water and you just added three parts per million of chlorine within three hours, there's no chlorine in your pool. So adding cyanuric acid between 30 and 50 parts per million will keep you at a baseline. Now, if you use chlorine tablets or if you use dichlor, like powdered chlorine, those two things contain cyanuric acid in them. And so every time you add that, you are adding more cyanuric acid to the pool. If it gets too high, that can be dangerous, but that's for the topic for another conversation. In fact, maybe even later. So those are the things. And then that's it. That's that's basically opening. There's really not much to it. It doesn't require any special tools. It's really just popping the cover off, kicking the pump and filter back on, 
you know, removing the drain plugs, replacing some of the drain plugs, and then making sure that your chemistry is right. And then obviously vacuuming, skimming, and brushing. But this is where a lot of people are going to have an issue with cloudy water and green water. So we'll focus on, I, I kind of want to focus on algae first, and then we're going to come back to cloudy water because most of the time, if you have algae and you do this method to clear it up or this method to kill the algae, you will have cloudy water. So we have been, I mean, I can tell you 27 years, uh, I've been teaching adults because I was the 13 year old boy teaching adults this particular trick. I never actually had a name for it, but pretty obvious that this name exists. It's called the shock and flock method. This is 100% the fastest way to go from a green pool to hosting. So if if you have if you open up your pool and it's doesn't even matter how green it is, don't drain it, you can fix it doing this method, right? And it happens to be the most affordable one. So all you have to do is that you make sure that your pool level is filled up a little bit high because you're going to be using a manual vacuum. So fill it up above your skimmer, almost close to the top. And then you're going to adjust your pH just to make sure that your pH is in line. You can also adjust your alkalinity if that's out of whack too. But really the, the, the more important metric there is pH. Then you're going to shock the water with chlorine shock. I personally like, I mean, look, use, it's called Cal Hypo Shock. If you're looking for it at any store, you're looking for it online, just make sure that the active ingredient says calcium, calcium hypochlorite, right? And you want to be over 60% of that active ingredient. They go up as high as I think 80%. I don't think I've seen it higher than 80%. Basically that it's one pound of this powdered chlorine. It does not have cyanuric acid in it. And it will treat 10,000 gallons of water. It'll super chlorinate 10,000 gallons of water. All you're trying to do is super chlorinate the water to kill all of the algae. That's all you're trying to do with this method. But at the same time, you're also going to add flocculant, which is another chemical, very affordable. I feel like flocculant is something that does not get used enough in this industry. I know pool guys don't like to use it. Pool people don't like to use it because it just means more work, but it's super fast. And actually we sell this stuff because I think it's, we call it, we call it fast flock and we call it that for a reason. One for alliteration, because that's important. And two, because that's what it actually does. It actually clears your pool fast, but it does require a little elbow grease. So what you're going to do, shock the pool. You're going to add flocculant. You're going to let it run for a couple of hours. And then you're going to, at the same time you're running it, you're going to brush your pool. And then you're going to let it sit for eight hours. Still, not with the pump running. Make sure the pump isn't running. And what's going to happen is you've just mixed all of that shock, all that highly concentrated chlorine, and you've mixed this flocculant. It's going to kill the algae, turning your water cloudy blue. And then the flocculant is going to take that cloud and drop it to the bottom of your pool in eight hours. The next day, which is the most work, but again, fastest, you are going to vacuum that cloud, that, that dead algae cloud out of your pool, which is why you have the water table a little bit higher so that you can account for that water loss as you're pumping it out of your pool. That's the best method. There are other methods. Uh, you know, a lot of people like to throw in algicide. I don't. Algicide is expensive. It adds, if you use a, um, a, a, a copper-based algicide, which a lot of them are, the cheaper ones are, that can cause problems if you have uh, blonde hair. You know, blonde hair turns green. That's when it um, reacts with chlorine. So having too much copper in your water can cause staining. You just don't want that much copper in your water. So I don't recommend using an algicide. Again, it's also expensive and you can't just get it anywhere sometimes. The other, you know, algicide is great for a, this is an extra chemical as a backup, which we'll talk about in the chemistry section. But other than that, you don't need to use it. Chlorine kills algae and it's the cheapest thing in the world to kill it with. Uh, you can use, if you don't want to use the Cal Hypo Shock in bags, you can use liquid chlorine. That works too. Uh, it's just a nightmare to handle because it's 
heavy, heavy, heavy gallons of basically uh, like four or five times concentrated bleach. So not the most fun. Now, let's say in this case, you didn't do the flock side of the shock and flock method. Or let's say it's the, you know, you had some people over, you were hosting and it got cloudy. It happens. Okay. There are four main causes for this, right? You have poor filtration. In fact, you know, we're going to talk about the three C's of pool care. The number one most important thing in pool care is circulation. It's the heart of your pool. It's pumping the blood. If you, <laughs> the blood being the water in this case, uh, if you don't, if you have a bad heart, you don't live. So, you know, your, your, your body's always cloudy and full of allergy. That's, I don't, I don't know if that analogy works, but there you go. Uh, it could be just from low chlorine levels. If you got a bunch of swimmers in your pool, you did add chlorine before they got there, they're going to use it up. Or if it's really sunny out and you don't have enough cyanuric acid, it's going to use it up Poor water chemistry. If you didn't, if you don't have your pH and alkalinity balanced in the right level, your chlorine's not going to be as effective. It's going to drop. If you don't have your calcium hardness balance, that could also be a problem, not as big of a deal, but still there. And finally, just straight up contaminants. And I and I say debris and algae. Algae comes, you know, there's a problem. This is a crazy thing. But if you've ever dealt with something called black algae, that is algae that the only way that gets incorporated into your pool is somebody coming from a dirty lake or ocean and they didn't wash their swimsuits or didn't wash the floats you now like have this <laughs> wild bacteria taking over your pool. So make sure um, that, you know, and this is, this can happen. I mean, you can't stop people from doing that. They're going to, they're going to come they might come straight from the beach and they're in your pool. So who knows? Um, so I don't think, did we talk about, no, we don't have them the listed here. So, so we sell another chemical. In fact, we, we really only sell two pool chemicals right now. And one of them is flock because I love it. I, I, I love it so much. I've been teaching people how to use flock for their almost 30 years. And I still think it's the most underrated chemical. It is so affordable and it does things so quickly. Again, it just requires a little elbow grease. You can use flock if you need to clear up your cloudy pool like in 24 hours, like if you host somebody and it turns cloudy and you got another host coming the next day or right away, that's kind of your only option. The other option besides making sure all of these things are okay is just using something called water clarifier. We have a product called weekly clarifier. It is just something it's, it's a coagulant versus a flocculant. So basically it does the, it, all these little tiny particles make your water cloudy. That's all it is, right? Little, little tiny particles. But they passed right through your filter system depending on the type of filter system you have. If you have a DE filter system, which is the best filtration system you can have, just from a water filtration standpoint, not the easiest, just the best, you know, you're you're gonna it's gonna do a much better job at getting rid of those tiny little particles than a sand filter or even a cartridge filter. So what Clarifier does is it coagulates. It takes those little tiny particles, it clumps them together, and they're a little bit bigger, and then your filter can be successful, no matter what type of filter you have, at getting rid of that cloud. Of course, adding this chemical, again, very inexpensive. You add little bits of it. If you add too much of it, it actually can cause a reverse effect because it uses you know negatively charged ions to bind these things together. So overdoing it causes the opposite effect. But with that, you just add a little bit, you can add it once a day, you can add it once a week, whatever, however bad it is. And you just let everything coagulate and you let, you got to keep your filter running 24 seven and your pool will clear up. All right. So that's cloudy water getting to how am I doing on time? By the way, should I just blow through these? How are we feeling? No, I think we're good. We're halfway through. So should be another 10, 15 minutes and then we'll go to questions. All right. We're going to blow through this then in 10 to 15 minutes. It's the, it's easy. Three C's of pool care, circulation, cleaning, and chemistry, all right? Circulation. The most important thing about your pool is your pool filter. If you don't have a pool filter, you have a stagnant body of disgusting water. So you need a pool filter and you need a pump, right? The pump pumps it into the filter, which filters everything out, pushes it back into your pool. It is the heart of your pool. 
So you want to make sure that it's flowing the best that can possibly. You don't want any clogs. You want it flowing good. You want to make sure your skimmer baskets are always empty. This is something that the pool people come to your house. This is the first thing they do. They empty the skimmer baskets. Empty your pump baskets as well. Uh, a little trick is if you have multiple return jets, this is really good. Angle them down and in a circle. So if you have, like, say, a jet over here and a jet here, angle them down and going this way. So if one one pushes this way, this one pushes this way. And that will create a nice circulation, hence the name. Uh, you want to run your filter. The more you run your filter, ideally, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I, under, I recognize that if you have a single speed pump, your electric bill is going to be through the roof. I understand that. If you're going to, if you, the bare minimum, eight hours a day, run it at night, save yourself a little money on your electric bill. If you have a variable speed pump, keep that sucker on. Keep it on. Just keep it at a low speed. You want your, you want all the water in your pool to go through your filter system at least once a day. That is your turnover rate. And there's a bunch of calculators you can do if you want to get super nerdy about it to find out exactly how many hours that is for your size pool and filter system and pump. But really, 8 to 12 hours, you're good to go. And then you want to monitor your filter pressure. As your filter filters, as it pulls contaminants out of your water, it is going to more and more, I was going to say the S word, crap, it's going to fill up inside of your sand filter or your cartridge filter or your DE filter. And the more stuff that's in there, the more pressure it creates. And you have a pressure gauge in your filter for that exact reason. And normally it runs, you know, after you backwash, if your filter is brand new, clean, ready to go, depending on the gauge itself, because uh, they can go faulty, 10, 12, 15 PSI. It's about one, one and a half bars, I believe. If, if we're not talking to anybody who <laughs> I don't think in deals in bars, but P PSI is what you're looking for. So make a note of that. If your filter's running, your water flow, check your returns. If that's flowing good, if it feels like it's got good pressure, mark it, mark it somewhere. That's your, that's your normal operating pressure. If it gets 10 pounds over that. So if your normal operating pressure is 10 PSI, great. If as soon as it starts to creep up towards 20, time to backwash. Your your filter's got a lot of crap inside of it. That's what's causing all that pressure. Backwash it, or if you have a cartridge filter, you know, relieve the pressure, take the lid off, clean those those filter grids. If you can just use a hose, a high pressure hose, that'll clean them off. Um, or you can soak them in a cleaning solution. That's that's what you have to do. Having a good pump and filter system running perfectly all the time will cure 30, I'll say 33% of all your problems. Cause I think all three of these things are equal. <laughs> they say it's the most important. It's definitely the first step because without it, everything else kind of falls apart, but they all have their equal parts. Now we have cleaning. All right. I talked about uh, the, the, having the robotic pool cleaner. If you can have a robotic pool, pool cleaner, that is doing two jobs. That is increasing your circulation. So that's improving that even, even more. And it's hands-free. You don't have to touch it. It just goes and vacuums the bottom of the pool. It scrubs the walls. It's, it's awesome. And your filter system doesn't even have to be running. So, and it's way less power. So if you only, if you want to save some money, but still keep your pool crystal clear, get, get it at robotic pool cleaner. You keep your filter system, you run that at night, and then during the day, you throw the robotic cleaner in there, and that's like a secondary filter. It's not as powerful, but it is like a secondary filter. This is the hardest one to do as a homeowner, but the pool people aren't going to do this either because they're not there all the time, but skim your pool. That's it. Every day. If you can do it every day, great. I mean, obviously, we're not home every day to do it, but if if you, especially if you live in an area where you get a ton of debris. If you have an indoor pool, good for you. You don't have to worry about this. But if you live in an uh, if you have an outdoor pool and you live in a place with a lot of leaves that fall into the pool, get those leaves, get that debris off the surface so that it doesn't drop to the bottom and give your robotic cleaner or your kids more work when they have to vacuum the pool. And yeah, that's that's what all I did growing up. My dad wouldn't touch that thing. If I wanted to swim, I had to vacuum. This is before the age of robotic pool cleaners. So uh, then I recommend doing this. You don't have to do it as often as skimming, but brushing your pool. 
it's kind of the opposite of like your teeth. You don't want to brush your teeth every few weeks. <laughs> but you want to do that daily. But for your pool, you don't really have to. Uh, places that you really need to focus on, you don't need to brush all the walls and everything. Just get the hard to reach spots, right? If you're brushing your teeth, get into those molars. This is behind the ladders, you know, in the corners and crevices where the robotic pool cleaner is not going to be able to get to, or even you doing the hand vacuum, you're not going to be able to get to. So just get the brush in there and just get that stuff out of those little corners, out of those little pockets, you know, behind, like I said, behind ladders, steps are a big one because it's not going to, you know, very few pool cleaners, they do, will climb the steps and actually clean them. They'll climb the steps. I don't know if they'll actually clean them. Finally is chemistry. This is the, the third most important part. Um, so this one's, you know, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but test the water once a week. If you can do it more times a week, great. Especially if you have, ho uh, you know, if you're hosting people, do it, do it a lot, do it a lot. This is why I say test trips. Cause it's like, you walk out there. Okay. I got a reading, you know, it's like, you know what to do. You have their chemicals on hand. You adjust it. You get good at this stuff. It's, su it's super easy once you get good at it. All right. The first thing you're going to do, once you test the water, depending on where you are, you want to make sure that the water is balanced. That means alkalinity first, then pH. Cause they're basically, they're, I, I call alkalinity pH as bodyguard because pH without alkalinity, if alkalinity was at zero, but your pH was perfect, 7.5 for us, your tiers are seven. The scale goes from zero to 14. 14 is liquid battery acid. No, sorry. <laughs> zero is liquid battery acid. And 14 is like, like drain cleaner. It's the most, and that doesn't even really, because you think drain cleaner is acidic, but it's actually very, very basic. Uh, the driest thing you could possibly think of. And so all you're trying to do is get in the middle. So when you cry, you don't cry unless you have like mascara and stuff. But other than that, like that's why you don't cry or that's why you don't, it does your eyes don't burn when you cry. Otherwise who would ever want to cry? So with that, uh, you just want to make sure that the pH is around 7.5, which is a little bit higher than seven, right? Obviously. Now, if you ha had zero alkalinity, if you had no alkalinity, if I dipped my finger in the pool, Changes the pH. If it a couple drops of rain, acid rain, by the way, drops the pH in your pool. Add chlorine, drops, you know, raises the pH in the pool. Uh, adding your turn on your water fountain and start aerating the pool raises the pH. So there's all of these things that like can can make your pH fluctuate. pH is very vo volatile. And so alkalinity, if you add up to 100 parts per million, even 150 parts per million of alkalinity, which is cheap baking soda. That takes the hit before your pH does. So yeah, big, big, big guy jumps in the pool, pees in it, does all kinds of awful stuff. He's going to affect the pH, but not if the alkalinity is set. It, he, he will affect the pH, but just not, he won't drop it or he won't raise it. It'll just, it alkalinity takes the hit, all right? So then you're going to add your sanitizer, whichever that is, chlorine, bromine, but guanine is non-chlorine stuff, peroxide-based stuff. Um, Salt, if you have, if you have a salt water, that's great, which is still a chlorine pool. However, you want to add your sanitizer, just make sure if you have a chlorine reading, it's between one and three parts per million. If you have bromine, it should be if you bromine's usually an indoor pool, four to six parts per million. And if you have a guanine, which is very expensive, but I know people use it, 30 to 50 parts per million of that main sanitizer. And but guanine systems have their own chemicals. Like you, you know, yeah, you can still use baking soda and soda ash and muriatic acid to adjust the pH and alkalinity, but everything else you have to kind of go with their system. You can't use, you know, there's no cyanuric acid. There's no cal, you know, you got calcium harness. Yeah. But no cyanuric acid. And then finally, I recommend shocking every week or two, especially, I mean, if you're hosting every week or literally after every single use, um, because it's, it does, it does a few things. So there are two types of shock and shocking is very confusing because there's the act of shocking, right? Which is raising your chlorine level, right? There's also shocking, which is another term for oxidizing, which is something that happens when your chlorine gets super high, but you can also just add an oxidizer. And then there's a product, multiple products called shock. So it's the act, it's the product, but also you don't need the product to do the act. It's, it's, it, again, I told you that the industry makes this super confusing, but
but I'm going to try to break it down for you as easily as possible. All right. So you have two types of chlorine shock, or sorry, you have two types of shock. You have chlorine shock and you have non-chlorine shock. That's it. I recommend at least using non-chlorine shock if your pool and all your other chemicals, if your pool looks good and all your other chemicals look good, just use non-chlorine shock. That's the stuff where you add it, 15 minutes, you can start swimming. All it's doing is refreshing the sanitizer that's already in there. It's good practice. The second type is, which we talked about earlier, is chlorine shock. That's the calcium hypochlorite shock or the liquid chlorine shock, which is a uh, sodium hypochlorite. And or bleach, very, very highly concentrated bleach. Now, just, just to be clear, bleach sits at around 1.5% chlorine. Liquid chlorine is like 12% chlorine. So it's a lot. It's like 10 times the amount of chlorine. Sorry, I'm sorry. I am wrong about that. It is double the amount of chlorine because I think bleach sits at 6%. I think Clorox is 6%. All right. So either way, you can, you can do either one. You can add the powdered bags, which are much easier to handle because they're one pound bags and they treat 10,000 gallons. Or you could get a five massive five gallon jug, which is massive. And if you're, I don't know, if you have a nice car and you're transporting that home and it spills. That's why I don't like liquid chlorine. It's fast. It works faster because you don't have to mix it. You don't have to like get it in the water, but it's a pain to handle. So you can do either one. If you have cloudy water or algae or your pool's just not looking great and your chlorine's low, use a chlorine shock. You really only have to add one bag, which is about one pound per 10,000 gallons. So if you have a 20,000 gallon pool, you're adding two bags. Now back all the way to the, um, which we didn't talk about, which wasn't on the slides. For algae, you're going to double, triple, or quadruple that dose if you have if you have algae. If you just have cloudy water, single dose should be fine. And then let's talk about heating real quick because there's a couple, if you guys have a heater, that's great. Um, there's a couple ways to heat your pool. One is with a gas heater, the best heater. It's, it's the most expensive, but it works the best. It works the fastest and it gets your pool really hot and you can keep your pool open for longer and you can open it earlier. Um, if you have a gas heater, great. The other one is a electric heat pump, which is more common in the South where it's warmer, but you can get one no matter where you are, but it's just not going to be as efficient and as powerful as a gas heater. But no matter which type of heater you have, you can save money by using a solar cover because you can think of it like, all right, well, I have a, a hot cup of coffee. And if I just let the coffee sit out, especially if I'm outside, it's going to start evaporating and it's going to cool down very quickly. But if I put a lid on it, it's going to stay, it's going to keep the heat in. That's what a solar cover does. It just keeps the water from evaporating and it's like putting a lid on your thermos for your coffee or your Stanley cup, whatever you want it, whatever you, whatever you prefer to drink out of. That's the, that's the analogy. Okay. So that's heating. That's, there's really not much to it. Let's talk about some questions. Are we ready for questions? I see a thumbs up. All right. We are ready. Yeah. Well, let's All go right. through the pre-submitted. Then we'll go through any in the chat and then we'll open up the floor. All right, here we go. What to do on a Monday morning after a weekend of bookings when my pool is cloudy? Is there anything I can do to clear it up fast? Is there something I can do the weekend to prevent this? Okay, so that's the first question. Um, yeah, if you want to do it super fast, it's flock. If you want to do it, you know, fast enough, it's water clarifier. Again, make sure that your chemistry is good. Make sure that your Filtration system is good, all of those things before you use it. But other than that, yeah. Is there anything you can do beforehand? Mm, just make sure your chlorine is good. Make sure your pH is anoclinear or balanced. That's really all you can do. Test strips versus Taylor test kit, which Taylor test kit is a liquid test kit for daily testing. Which one to get that isn't too intimidating for beginners? Hands down, test strips. Not into dip and you just measure. You look at the colors on the bottle. You match it up. Again, not as accurate as a liquid test kit, but way faster, way easier. And we're not we're not chemists. We're not trying to be super accurate. We're just trying to be in the ballpark. Pet hair removal. Any tips on quick, quickly removing pet hair? Yeah, uh, your skimmer. <laughs> Get a fine mesh skimmer and remove that pet hair ASAP. And... I don't know if I would do this while people were swimming, but you can get something called a skimmer sock. 
Or if you want to save money or you already have these lying around, pantyhose over the skimmer, and it will basically turn your skimmer basket into a fine mesh strainer, and it will strain out any of that hair. Do you recommend a do you recommend a different chlorine level for heavier use, like in our cases? I wouldn't go above five parts per million. I would, I would, if you're gonna, you know, obviously you you should be between one and three parts per million. Just keep it at three. But I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go anywhere above five. Um, yeah. And if you're, by the way, if your guests complain of that chlorine smell, use an on chlorine shock. It'll get rid of it. Oh, did I skip some? Okay. How do I keep phosphates from turning my pool green? First of all, phosphates do not turn your pool green. Phosphates are what we, it's, basically it's algae food. This is something that the pool industry and I don't agree on. Uh, so, and there's, there's reasons for this. And I don't think anyone wants to talk about them if they're in the pool industry, but Hey, I don't sell chemicals besides clarifiers. So here we go. So chlorine kills algae. Algicide kills algae. Removing phosphates doesn't kill algae. What it does is it starves them. So you're just removing the food. The thing is, is that because it doesn't actually kill, it's much cheaper to sell and it's much easier to sell without any EPA regu regulations. So I personally do not recommend phosphate removers because if your pool's green, like I don't have time to dance around. Like let's, let's kill this stuff because we need to get rid of it. And you know, phosphate removers just feel like extra chemicals that the pool industry likes to sell. I, I you know, I've ne look 30 years. I only started hearing about phosphate remover in the last like seven to eight years. And that's really just, I think an industry thing. So phosphates do not turn your pool green. They are food for algae. So yes, the theory is remove the food and starve the algae. I want to minimize power costs for running the filter. I have a time-based meter, great, and power is the most expensive in the afternoon. Yes. Can I skip running the filter at that time? Sure. Absolutely. You can run it 12 hours overnight if you want. You can, uh, depending on, you know, how how dirty your pool is, if your pool is constantly dirty, well, then you're probably going to want to run it more often. But other than that, yeah, go for it. Um, I will say one note to that. Uh, if you have a filter or if you if your pool's heated or sorry, if you have a filter, of course you have a filter. If your pool's heated, um, if you if you run your filter at night, you are creating surface tension and that's going to cause more uh, evaporation. So your pool is going to cool down more at night. If your pool is still at night, then it will it will be less evaporation, not that much, but enough to where it may you may see. You may be running your heater a little bit more, but that's, you can do it. Are automatic pH controls worth the expense? Nope, because alkalinity increaser is baking soda and you just add it to your pool. Uh, when is it necessary to drain and refill a pool? Uh, the only time I feel it's necessary is if you have to actually fix a problem with the pool structure. But other than that, then I can, you can you can solve any water problem with chemicals. And... You also are at risk at, uh, even within ground pools, if you drain the pool, especially like vinyl liner pools, they can pop out of the ground. Fiberglass pools pop out of the ground. Concrete pools pop out of the ground. If you, ever, if you live in it, there's too many variables, but you don't need to do it. How are copper products used? How are copper products? Oh, yeah. So um, there are mineral systems, mineral systems uh, you can get, you can put them in your skimmer basket. You can, um, they come in like these cartridges that you can replace every year that are plumbed into your system, sort of like a chlorinator. Sometimes they are both a mineral system and a chlorinator combined. Uh, yes, you are adding copper, copper. Sometimes you are also adding silver. Both of these minerals actually neutralize and kill algae. So, and, and other bacteria. Uh, I used, this anecdote that I was told way back uh, was like, that's what pirates used to throw their like coins into water to keep it sanitized. I don't know how true that actually is, but you know, it's a fun little anecdote. Uh, but yeah, it does. It will kill bacteria and algae. However, um, 
it, it do, you, you can't just use copper alone. You have to use chlorine, which is why it's reduced chlorine. And if you do this, you can reduce your chlorine instead of one to three parts per million, you can keep it at 0 0.5 to one part per million. So you're reducing it, but you're not reducing it all that much. Uh, but yeah, that is that is what copper does. Thoughts on converting to salt? Look, uh, if you want to automate your pool care, get a salt system. Makes the water feel better. You don't have to add chlorine. I mean, it's it's the pool makes its own chlorine. I like salt. Oh, are we done? That was it? All right. Oh, yeah. I don't have a bottle sitting here. This is a weird place to put this. But um, on April Fool's Day, I launched a product, which is called Urine Detector. There is an old wives' tale of – it actually started back in the 50s where people would add this chemical to the pool, which – doesn't actually exist and it would turn the water blue or red or green if you peed in it. Uh, it this is an impossible chemical to make. They cannot make this chemical. It does not exist. But it's a fun anecdote to tell your kids or to tell your uncle who likes to pee in the pool because he's too lazy to get out, you know, hey, I put this chemical in the pool because they don't know any better. They don't know it's an old wives' tale. You do because I just told you. But I actually made a bottle of this stuff. It's literally just a bottle with a very convincing label. You can buy it for 10 bucks on our website right now if you go to swimuniversity.com slash urine. If you want a placebo around, you know, this is great. If you're hosting, you can just keep this bottle near the pool and you can, you can just fill it with water to keep it weighed down. No one will know. And so it'll keep people from peeing in the pool, which by the way, Urine reacts with chlorine and creates trichloramines, which is what causes that chlorine smell. It causes eye irritation, skin irritation, and it uses up chlorine. So if you're having an issue keeping your chlorine high, it's because maybe it's because a bunch of people are peeing in your pool. Just saying. No way to tell because the bottle, because the chemical doesn't exist, but the bottle does. So yeah, April Fools was a, was a joke. Launched in April Fools, but it is absolutely a real product. You can actually buy this particular bottle. I actually make them myself here in my house and, and ship them with my wife. So that's it. Other than that, we'll get to questions, but if you want more help with taking care of your pool, uh, there's a few ways to get in touch with me. You can join our newsletter. Just go to swimuniversity.com. Uh, you can download our cheat sheet, which we have right here. I don't know if anybody can see this because I'm sharing my screen. Let me see if there's any more slides. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. Here we go. So I'll stop the share. Um, so, yeah, that's the cheat sheet right there. You can go and get that for free. Uh, you can also get our book. This is our pool care handbook. I know it's thick, but it covers pretty much. Nope. It covers literally everything you need to know about pool care. Great to have on hand. Uh, we send a few emails a week with advice on taking care of your pool all summer. We publish uh, a YouTube video every week. We publish three shorts and reels a week, whether on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, X, LinkedIn, for, you know, we're everywhere. Um, and are we are publishing new articles to our website all the time? And you'll know about them if you sign up. So that's it. Awesome. Ooh, thank you, Matt. That was refreshing that, uh, <laughs> That it was it was not me uh talking the whole time um, <laughs> super super i i need to review this and watch recording because uh especially the opening pool part um i feel like uh it got a little um for a beginner for me i gotta rewatch it but that was that was super educational and i think everyone uh would agree i was watching the chat throughout and it seems like everyone really really enjoyed it and, and learned a lot um but before I open the floor um ariana any specific things you want to call out from the chat sure yeah we had a few unanswered questions um one being um i run my booster pump seven to eight hours a day but it is loud now and do you think that means i will need to replace it yearly yearly N no um so a booster pump for those who don't know is a depending on i don't know what this is for but it's usually put in to power a um a pressure side pool cleaner Here's a little trick you can try. If it's really loud, this is going to sound stupid, hit it with a shoe 
and I mean that truthfully because uh, especially if you don't not, not if you're you're basically a rubber mallet, you know, not too hard. Um, but sometimes it can loosen the um, the bearings and the um, and and the some other motor part inside the motor itself. So you hit the big, you know, black or gold end, not the plastic pieces, but the metal part. Uh, it, sometimes it quiets down. So uh, and you may only have to replace the motor, not the actual pump itself, not the impeller, not the house, you know, so just the motor if it's loud. Um, but you want to replace it every year. No. And and I would decide if you even need it. So if you do have to replace it, do you even need it? Because you could if it's if it is to power a pressure side cleaner, you could invest in a robotic cleaner and just have it removed and it would be way cheaper. Awesome. Thank you. There's a couple more. Um, how often do you suggest cleaning the four pleated uh, filters? Oh, the pleated ones? Again, that's the same thing with the um, the pressure gauge. If your pressure gauge is, is going up a lot uh, by, by at least 10 pounds, then that's when you clean them. But yeah, clean them at the beginning of the year and then clean them at the end of the year, just no matter what the pressure is, just so that you're, you know, you're starting clean and you're storing clean. Awesome. Um, and lastly, I'm going to butcher the name of this, but any way to reduce cyanuric acid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to partially drain your pool and refill it with fresh water. It's the only way to do it. There's, there is no, uh, chlor there is no cyanuric acid reducer. There is chlorine reducer. There's a chlorine neutralizer, um, which I believe is, uh, potassium monopersulfate or no that's that's non anyway uh i forget i'm, I'm trying to think as a, as a home brewer it's the same exact chemicals of candom candom tablets but anyway um they do make a chlorine neutralizer that you can use but not a sarnark acid reducer gotcha cool thank you so much that's all from my side of the chat sweet awesome so we'll we'll open up the floor i see a few people already raising their hand if anyone does have a question there's a feature you want me to look at the chat myself raise your hand oh yeah matt you can go look at the chat there are some more, uh, but as Matt looks at it, uh, maybe oh, Sean, right. we could get to could get to your question as well. Yeah, I was um, wondering about uh, painting your pool. Oh yeah. So, oh, what yeah, about it? and um, like you already said about draining the pool, this could be risky. Um, uh, yeah, so it's it's risky if you are draining and. And for a long period of time. So you'd want to find a stretch where you're not, you know, where there's no, um, you're not going to have like a ton of rain. That's the main, that would be my main worry. But other oh. than that, yeah, like that, you know, I wouldn't worry about it other than that. And if you, and if you, if you live near a lake and you have an in-ground pool and because you have a high water table, then yeah, that can risk popping. But if you have a concrete pool, I mean, it's the least likely to pop, honestly. Oh, okay. And the other thing is like, do you recommend the painting or more of just uh, like the stains and stuff around the shallow end? So uh -huh. if it drain it a little bit and use that acid stuff, but then you can't use the same water, right? Yeah. So you can, no, you, you can. Um, so when, when they, they do this thing called acid washing when uh, when concrete gets really pitted over time. Yeah. They yeah. do this um, acid washing, which is all they do is take muriatic acid, which is what I mentioned you can use to actually lower pH. Um, it's uh -huh. highly concentrated acid. I would not be messing with it other than this. Um, and what they do is they drain – as they're draining the pool, they pour it around the edges, and it kind of just like etches the side of the pool as it drains. Um, <laughs> that's how they acid wash. They'll do some brushing as well, and then they'll refill it, and it's completely fine. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Well, thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Dewan, yeah, I see you also raise your hand. Yes. Uh, my question is, um, do you condone um, any type of uh, chemical manufacturer? Uh, I was told from some people that, uh, okay. <laughs> for, for example, uh, Clorox. All right, tell me. Uh-huh. Uh, so, uh, okay, is Clorox, uh, uh, I know it's widely available at uh, many Costco's in my area, in the yep. Las Vegas area, and I use that. I, I found it to be pretty good, but some people just say that it's a, it's not a good, uh, uh, and they, they prefer some other brands and 
um, makes of uh, chemicals. So that, that's my first question. I have another one when it comes to heaters. Exactly. I would be curious where that advice is coming from. There is a yeah. lot of um, backyard chemists on the internet who like to uh, find the cheaper alternative and not the brand name. They also don't tell you, but they work in the pool industry. And they're, you know, I get a lot of comments on our videos from a lot of these people. Um, personally, I do not have an issue with with Clorox. Um, I and in fact, I don't condone any pool chemical. They all come from the same plants. So, in fact, so so the same company that makes BioGuard, the really expensive pool chemicals, they also make Clorox pool chemicals. They don't make Clorox. They make pool, Clorox pool chemicals. It's they're called BioLab. So, uh, the other question is uh, in regards to heaters. So. I've mm -hmm. been using a, um, well, it gets very, very warm out here in Las Vegas during the summer. So I, I, just, oh, yeah. I, I tend to not even use my, my, um, uh, the, the pool cover, the little bubble pool cover yep. wrap, um, because it, it literally can get over 100 degrees in the water. Yeah. Um, but, uh, there are times when I want to get the pool warmed up. And, um, uh, I was contemplating going for either, uh, the solar, uh, pool um, solar panels for the uh, for water versus uh, a regular uh, electric pool. I don't have an option for gas out here where I'm at. So yeah, they make there is there is you're talking about the one like it's just a big black pad with a bunch of like little pipes in yeah. it, and then yes. okay, yes. yeah, yeah. But, so uh, so that will work as effectively as a solar cover. So I wouldn't even. I would just use a solar cover because it's way cheaper. And then you don't have this like ugly looking Thank black you. plastic thing that's killing your grass. If you even have grass out there um, or, you know, it just, it just looks ugly. Whereas a solar cover looks kind of nice. And what I would do with solar covers, like if you wanted to heat your pool quickly, let the Vegas sun do its thing during the day and put your solar cover on only at night. Cause then that'll keep that heat in, in that you gain during the day. And if it's a pain to take the cover on and off, you can actually cut it. So you can just do it in pieces because you just the cover just floats like bubble wrap. So you just make sure that you get it, you know, in pieces that are easily manageable. But I um other than that, where you live, if you wanted to get an actual heater, you you you'd be really good to get a uh electric heat pump because they would be really efficient out there. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Matt, I saw a few questions in the chat, just quickly touching on, on liquid solar covers since we're on the topic. Maybe you want to cover that. Yep. So liquid solar covers are, uh, I actually did an experiment, I think back in like 2011 uh, on video. So basically a solar cover, the way that it works is a lot of people think that, you know, you can put the solar cover on during the day and it's going to raise the temperature of your pool. It will do that, but it's only going to do it by like 5, 10 degrees at most. What a solar cover is really good at is reducing the evaporation that where you lose that heat that you gain during the day, like I just mentioned, at night. So keeping your solar cover on at night is like, you know, your coffee is being heat, heated up all day, right? And then you just put a lid on it overnight when it gets really cold outside or cooler outside. So that's what it's good for. Now – Liquid solar cover is takes that same concept. All it's all it does is it creates this microscopic thin layer on the top of your pool. It uses, uh, I believe, it's like alcohol and some type of wax. And I know that that sounds like you probably shouldn't put in your pool, but it's the amount is so thin that it doesn't even matter. And all it does is it creates this this uh, evaporation reducing barrier. That's all it does. Now, if you add liquid solar cover and you run your pump at night, you're just breaking it all up and it's seeping out all over the place. But if you if you add it and then you lock the, you know, you keep the pool still, you'll notice it. I've seen it actually happen. If you if you actually use it and your pool is still and it's cool out at night and your water is warm, if you jumped in it you would just all of a sudden see a bunch of like heat billowing out. That's all it does. So uh, it is totally safe. I know many companies that make it. Um, it is not a replacement by any means, but it will certainly help if you don't feel like adding a solar cover on your pool. And if you don't 
mind not running your filter system at night. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Ray, I see your hand is up. Ray, you're muted. I can't. Oh, uh, yes. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Great. So, yes, this product here I put in the chat, Pool RX. Uh huh. Seems to. Is this a real product? I mean, does this thing work? <laughs> Yeah, it's copper. It's the it's the copper thing I mentioned um, okay. earlier about you can put copper in your skimmer. Right. Um, that's what that is. So it's it's chelated copper that um, just kind of seeps out of this little pod over time. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's all it is. That's something you'd recommend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. I yes, yes. I I I'm still kind of like getting my feelings around copper. Like I'm trying yeah. to, I'm trying to, because I've just dealt with so much issues over the, over the years of like, why is my hair green? Why is my pool stained? Why, you know, I know it helps. So mm -hmm. I just, that's all I, that's my only hesitation is that. There might be uh, some side effects. You're saying. It's, yeah. If you have, if you have a high level, like I would just keep an eye, like I would, I would get test strips that test for copper and just keep an eye on it. Cause then if you do, then you're fine and it's, then you're good to go. Okay. All right. Great. Awesome. Thanks Ray. Thanks. Man. It is real. It's a, I think it's an Australian company that makes that, but now there's copycats. <laughs> um, all right. Moving up. Makia. I hope I didn't, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Makia? I take her call. I take her, her question. That's my wife. Oh, okay. Hello, so, Mr. Bird. Yeah. Um, so the okay, so the 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 pump that uh uh pumps the blows the air and pumps the water for the water features. Uh -huh. I replaced the capacitor in that thing like three times and it'll last 90 days and then the capacitor pops again and I'm replacing it. Does that mean mm. I just need to get another pump or what? What's actually going on where the capacitors keep popping? Sounds like you need a new pump. Okay. Or at That's least a I'm new motor for the pump. Well, a new, yeah, a new motor for the pump, you know. Yeah, you can do okay. – um, if you if it's a booster pump, it's the motor is probably going to cost just as much as the pump itself. You mean like so – you can buy the whole it. thing or you can buy just a motor and, and replace it. All the motor is is just a shaft that spins a – um an impeller yep mm -hmm. so if you want to go through the trouble of like install you know it's much easier to install the booster pump like even if you want to do it yourself it's like all right take it out cut some pipe take it out drop a new one in you know what wire it up which i would recommend an electric electrician unless you're good at that um but yeah it sounds like you need a new pump all right hey i came in this meeting late would it be pop uh is this going to be recorded for me to go back and review later yep okay cool i want to listen to other questions all right, that's all I had. Cool. So, thanks so much. Yeah. Um. All right. I I want to be conscious of everyone's time. We are over time. So first of all, if anyone does need to jump, thank you so much for joining. Um. And then again, to stay in touch with Matt and all his awesome tips, you know, make sure you check out his website. Um. I can stay on, but no one really wants me. You all want Matt, so I'm just gonna. If if Matt can stay on and take a few more questions, it looks like we have three more questions lined up. Then yeah, let's uh, go. We can do it. All right. Uh, Antoinette. Okay. If um, So if your phosphates are high, but your pool is perfect in every other way, like the, the um, You're fine. chlorine, the alkalinity, the pH, mm -hmm. do um, the pool, the, uh, the place that we uh, take our water to get tested mm -hmm. says, you know, they say, oh, well, you need this phosphate, you know, you need to reduce your phosphates and then you need to, you'll need to clean your filter after that mm -hmm. um so i'm just wondering how important that is if if it's not it's not i mean like they're <laughs> what is the problem they're treating is your pool looks great and all the chemistry is right what's the problem they're just so this is where i get a little like it upsets me a little bit because it's just well i'll say this most likely what it is is these companies have you know these this basic training and and I don't know who you talk to, but this is what, I mean, I was in this industry for so long and still am, I guess, but you know, they just train people on these testing machines 
and the testing machines are mm -hmm. all made by the chemical companies. So mm -hmm. what they're spitting, the, the shopping list that they spit out is just to sell you chemicals. Um, unless they're actually testing it themselves with liquid and they're giving their own advice as a store. If they're not doing that and they're just reading the printout, yeah, of course it's going to tell you to add phosphate remover, even though your pool looks great and mm -hmm. phosphates have never been an issue in the past and your chemicals are all properly balanced. Wh what problem are you solving by buying more chem chemicals? Right? So that's why I think it's like, okay, yeah, like phosphates just naturally occur. So, you know, if, mm -hmm. you know, every algae food is algae food. Like it's algae is going to thrive no matter what. What keeps algae from thriving is having a balanced mm -hmm. water and good chlorine and a good chlorine reading or a good sanitizer, whether that's copper or using salt to generate chlorine or bromine or even guanine. Those are just things that you absolutely need to kill bacteria and to keep things Mm -hmm. regulate it everything else i promise you is unnecessary so um even like calcium hardness that's another uh so so calcium hardness is oh. i call it an investment chemical it is something you only have to add once a year usually depending on how if you just re if you just filled your pool and you're you have, you live in an area with hard water what it does is it protects the equipment and it protects the actual pool itself. So yes, it is important. It's not a, you know, it's not, that's not an unnecessary chemical. It's just not something that you need to add all the time is once you get that reading where, where it needs to be like, a, you know, for a vinyl liner pool, which you don't need as much like 175 mm -hmm. parts per million to 225. Like once you're there, you're good. You're good to go. Um, okay. if you, if you have a concrete pool or a plaster pool, like something that, you know, the calcium is really important or otherwise you do get that pitting in the wall. Also low pH does mm -hmm. that too. Uh, yeah. So, but once you add it, you don't really need to continue to add it. And, oh, and also so if you have an extra, if you have extra of it, it's also an ice melter. That's what it is. It's ice melt. Huh. Okay. Calcium so calcium hardness. hardness would be something that's more important than say, the phosphate measuring oh, one, the phosphate. yeah 100% yep. yeah okay okay but again right, you're not you. going to see a difference you're not going to it's not going to improve your water quality you're not going to see a difference in like it's not going to clear your water or do anything like that it's really just to protect the investment that is your pool and the life of it like the equipment the walls all of that the vinyl liner all of that i see, I see. okay thank you you're welcome awesome awesome um juice marie um, hi, yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to say, Matt, that even before I was a Swimply host, I was following you. So <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> so nice to meet you too. Sweet. Thank you. Um, so my question is about um, robotic pool cleaners. I use a lot of flock. I'm a top Swimply host in my area. So that's been working for us. It's, it's great, right? So my question is, is there any robotic pool cleaner that will actually vacuum out the water instead of recirculating it? Because for me, you know, that that dust, that sediment that goes yeah. on the bottom, there's nothing else that would just pull it out like that, you know, nope. the actual manual cleaner that we use. No. In fact, um, so all a robotic cleaner does because it's not attached to any hoses, it's just, you know, sucking water through a bag. So it's mm -hmm. just going to blow all of that sediment up. Exactly. And that's what I'm afraid of. And then it's just going to go right down yep. again. After a couple uh, of hours. Rob so uh, pressure side cleaners like Polaris's do that as well. The only one that doesn't do that is something you can get a suction side cleaner. I'm saying this not to recommend it for this particular purpose, but it's the only type of automatic cleaner that actually hooks up like a manual vacuum. And so because it hooks up like a manual vacuum, you could put that to waste and it would automatically get rid of it. Okay. Te it, technically. So, and, and they happen to be the cheapest cleaners. So you could pick one up for like a hundred bucks and it's mm. basically a manual vacuum on that. Just, it, it, it I don't know. How, honestly, I don't know the, the physics, but it just hops around your pool, like the bottom of your pool and it sucks it up into the filter system. So 
when you do vacuum, you always vacuum on waste so that it, it bypasses the filter and, and goes to the backwash hose. Usually that's how you would, you know, get rid of that stuff. Got it. Okay. I'll look it up. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I just see the block, the brand of flock I recommend. I mean, mine, <laughs> <laughs> I only sell two chemicals. It ain't going to be sale for, they ain't going to be for sale that much longer. Cause we're not going to be selling it much longer, but I have a lot of it fast flock again, cause not a lot of people know about it. Underrate it. There you go. Just curious, why why are you not going to be selling it for much longer? Uh, we just don't want to be. We 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 tried selling chemicals for uh, in twenty twenty one. We started you know selling our own line, and I just felt like um, I I didn't want to be an education company that also sold the product. So it it felt like a conflict of interest, and so. We tried it just to see if that was something that made any sense and it doesn't. So we were, we have it. Cool. Cool. Sorry for getting off topic there. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, it's just uh, a business thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kim, uh, your hand is up. Hi. Um, I've been, I've been a subscriber to swim, a cat swim university for quite some time. So thank you for, for awesome. him for helping me to, to be my own pool maintenance person. You're welcome. Love your videos, and I still reference and look look them up sometimes. So now, and the young lady a few minutes ago gave me she she helped she gave me another question in addition to what I had. Um, I do have a Matronix pullback system, and yep. I was recently looking at somebody else's video on YouTube uh, DIYer, and he recommend he said one of the best investments for him was getting the fine filters inside the Matronix. But I did that because here in Georgia. We have heavy pollen, and mm. over, over top of my um, pool, I have a, a, a what you call it, a maple tree that drops mm. ash down into the pool. Yep. Was that a bad investment? Because based no. on what you told young lady, no. Oh, it's not. Okay. No. Wait. So it, what, will, is, is... it will hold it in there. It won't just come back out. It's it's going to stay inside my my make sure my back until I take it out. I don't know the answer to that specifically, but I would say that. Because it's pollen, it it's a little – it's not these – when I say little tiny particles, mm -hmm. I'm talking about tiny, tiny particles. Like you, you can't see them with your eye, whereas a okay. piece of pollen you can see with your eye. So most, so most robotic pool cleaners can filter out up to a 2 micron. A 2 micron for, for – this is really going to be hard to explain – but imagine taking a single piece of hair and looking at it as like down a, down the barrel. Like that's how tiny a micron is. Okay. So it will filter out, it should filter out pollen, especially if you have the fine mesh version. That said, if you can get it, if you can remove the pollen with a fine mesh skimmer before it even gets to the bottom, that's the ideal thing. I know like you're not going to go out every single day and skim an entire, you know, I know it's a lot of work. Um, but yeah, if that's your, yeah, I don't think that's a bad investment at all. I think it's a great investment because then you're also filtering the water too. Like that fine mesh in that robotic cleaner is filtering the water too. And that ash from the tree, because the ash doesn't stay at the top. It settles on the bottom. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah. Okay. And then the, what I, my original question though was, Cause I, and I don't, I don't want to keep belaboring the copper point with you, but yeah. I saw the thing on how to, how the copper can help. And I haven't really had algae since then. Plus I've cut down a lot of trees, but what I do with my, my, I, I've taken like a small piece of copper, maybe say about, about four or five inches. And you know, the ducks that float in your pool with the chlorine tab. Yeah. And I just have it in there and it just bounces around like that is I have a vinyl pool. So what yep. are your suggestions on that? I haven't uh, had don't. It doesn't work, but but it's because it, it the way that the copper enters the it, copper doesn't leach off copper pipes in otherwise your water would be filled with copper. Um, so yes, it it does work to an extent, but like not for that amount. You know what I mean? So okay. like you so you'd be better off with some type of copper dispenser rather than just the pipe itself. Uh, unless you were putting a ton of like copper pipe in your water, which I'm sure you're not with just the floating duck. But um, yeah, I, I I would use some type of like we mentioned pool RX is like a copper. It's chelated copper that's um, 
add it to the water. Like it's, it like leaches off of this pod and it builds up in your water. And then you just want to make sure that it doesn't build up too much because high copper can cause staining and, and other, you can actually turn your water green too. Like it's the, you know, the anecdote I always give is the Statue of Liberty is copper. It's a copper lady, okay. but it's green. So, so what else do we expect? Okay. Well, I have colors. And also it's time for salt. So yeah. I, saw, I saw a few videos yesterday where I, one of them, a guy just laid them all out and he cut them. I, I don't know why I thought that I was supposed to dissolve the salt first and put it in the pool. But so we can just pour it all in and then just brush. Yeah. To, like to, to, oh, okay. yeah. You don't have to pre-dissolve salt. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can just that. Yeah, you can just add it. Just like you're flavoring food. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And it, no, because I thought it was going to damage my vinyl just letting it sit if I didn't brush it. No. Okay. Uh, but um, what will though is calcium hardness. Okay. So when you add calcium hardness to the water, because it, because it's the stuff that melts ice, it heats up when it comes in contact with water, and it can damage vinyl liner. And obviously, okay. shock can shock can bleach it. Like you know, like the really concentrated. Well, you're not. You can. I mean, you're not really going to be using that anymore with salt. But you know, really high concentrated cal calcium hypochlorite powdered shock could bleach your liner and actually, I guess a bad habit of mine because after i have a party i do throw a bag of shock, shock in the water yeah i mean as long as you brush it fast and you disperse it evenly like it's not going to be that yeah. crazy but you know okay. and they also you. make fast dissolving shock so if you buy that then you, you should be okay thank you nice You're welcome. You. talking with you especially after following you for years yeah I'm thank you so driver. much it's awesome <laughs> all right thank you yeah Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Um, all right. Looks like last person with their hand up, Lachelle. And no, Flock can't bleach your liner as well. It is oh. not a it is not a bleach. Can you all hear me? Yes. Oh my goodness. I've been like waiting so long. Sorry. <laughs> um, Matt, nice to um meet you. Also yeah. a subscriber for a long time. So Sweet. thanks for all your help over the years. Um, so where where I live, every every spring we go open our pool or most springs when we go to open up our pool we have we have a vinyl liner in ground mm -hmm. pool um three to eight feet or four to eight feet something like that mm -hmm. so there's water behind the liner and we've had it so bad sometimes we're like the vine the liner's floating um we suck the water out and then what happens is um you know it doesn't go back into place there there's you know, you know, wrinkles in the liner. It's just a pain. So um, our pool company said that they they make something called an Aquador and we could get that installed. Um, I think it's something that goes over like the skimmer or, or somewhere in that area. And it's supposed to allow us to keep a higher, um, more water over the winter. And the yes. idea is like, hopefully more pressure will keep the water from getting behind the, you know, I don't know. Have, do, do you have any recommendations or have you so that is the actual name of the company. They're called Aquador. I believe it's spelled with one O. Okay. Okay. Um, I love those. Okay. So, so even if you didn't have this problem and you wanted to add that to your pool, I would recommend it. Okay. Great. The, the okay. way that it works, if, if, if you don't under, if you don't, if you've never seen it before, the best way I can explain it. It's like a Tupperware lid for your skimmer box. Oh, okay. Right. So it just, it's a, it's, you, you add a new skimmer plate so that it comes with a skimmer plate and then it comes with this plastic lid that you basically snap over it. And so what it allows you to do, its main purpose is it allows you not to drain the water in the wintertime when you winterize it. So you can keep okay. the water at the normal level. So yeah, I like them for that reason. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. One more time. Are we good? Go ahead. Yes, it goes to the. Yep, it splits off. Oh, I okay. missed the question. Think, I'm sorry. I think. I think that may have been just. Uh, it's only tall. All doors are. Two. I think it's just they intertwine with one another. Um. All right, I think we covered all the questions. And 
I have a question. I don't. I'm. I don't think my hand was raised though. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, first of all, the um, webinars are very helpful. Um, I really appreciate them. I have, but this is on a sort of a different subject. I don't know if it's okay because I have three like admin related questions. Is that okay for this? Uh, one? Save it for our next. The next. Yeah, let's save for next one. Or you know what? You can email me directly um, with those questions. Yona. Okay. At do you sell flock for a chlorine pool? Yeah, yeah, flock works for any style, any pool. It's again the most underrated chemical. Um, the one on your website said it's for non chlorine and salt water. Oh, it's also for that. That's it's what I, I that's 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 my bad. It it's I meant that it's also for that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's an addition to, yeah. So it works for chlorine. It works for baguanine. It works for salt. It works for bromine. It works for all, it works for literally any body of water. Okay, great. I'll try yeah. a bottle. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't catch your email address for the, sorry. uh, Y O N A. I'll put it in the chat. I'll just put it on the chat. Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, oh, great. Thanks. thanks so much guys. Um, if you guys want to do this again, sign up to uh to to uh Matt's email. He told me a little secret that he replies to all the emails. So just <laughs> email him, reply to the emails, bug him, oh, be boy. like, hey, we want to do another webinar. Uh, <laughs> apologies in advance, Matt. But yeah, th Fine. those all go directly to him. Um, but yeah, no, I I I've been going a lot deeper into some universities. Some of you guys have been following for for years. I've Love the articles of the videos, so definitely recommend checking that out. Um, thank you so much, Matt, again, for doing this. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Ariana. Um, any last words, Matt, before we... Uh... No, thank you for having me. And yeah, make sure you follow us where you want to follow us. We're, we're kind of everywhere. Swim University. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. See ya.